Hi, today we're here to talk about whether it's time to upgrade to the Pico 4 in 2023 if you're used to playing all your VR apps on Steam VR. But first, a big shout out to our sponsor of the day, VR-Wave.Store, your go-to place for your lens prescription adapters. 5% discount when you apply the code VR Essentials. So guys, the big question, is it time to ditch your PC VR headset and upgrade to the Pico 4 in 2023 using Wi-Fi 6? Big shout out to Asus for providing us a whole bunch of different routers. Today, we're going to be using the Asus XT8 series, more specifically the AX6600 Zen. Now, in the previous video, we put the XT8 to the test as we were casting the Pico to the television inside of the same room as the Wi-Fi. So if you want to know how it fared there, do go and check it out after this video. But some of the questions that I really wanted to ask myself today is whether the XT8 would perform well if I'm standing inside of my studio 10 meters away from the router with a wall and a door closed in between. As the Wi-Fi 5, we all know, and the regular subscribers to this channel saw before, the results were really poor and it just didn't work. So how did it fare this time? Let's find out together. For the purpose of this test, there are only a few devices hooked up to the Wi-Fi 6, including one mobile phone, my television, and also my PC, using a Cat8 cable that's linked directly to the router. Do make sure you don't use a Wi-Fi dongle as it will affect the stream undoubtedly. This video will be split in different categories. Of course, there'll be timestamps below as well. So do skip to wherever you wish to watch that's more relevant to you. We're going to look at, for example, audio to make sure there's no crackling or anything like that, as well as the graphics. How do the shadows fare? How do the actual compression fare? And of course, latency and tracking to make sure that when there is something moving, what goes on in the headset is actually one-to-one -one, or let's just see how we can actually get the settings to be right. Now we are gonna be streaming of course wirelessly to the desktop and we're gonna be using virtual desktop. Now virtual desktop isn't free, however, it does provide a lot more flexibility, including the opportunity to boost the actual bit rate. So it is much better software compared to the free software that comes with the Pico streaming assistant. Now we'll be putting two VR games to the test, one of which will be Half-Life Alex, because it demands a lot of graphical power, especially when streaming to the VR headset completely wirelessly. And at the end of this video, there will be about 20 minutes of gameplay in After the Fall, just to show you the proof of the pudding with the sound as well. And of course, as always, there will be the VR Essentials community shout outs at the end of this video as well. A big shout out to you guys as well. Thank you very much for joining and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. All right, guys, are you ready for the analysis as to how it went on and whether it is time to upgrade to the Pico 4 and ditching your PC VR headset? And by the way, we will talk about battery life as well. All right, are you ready? Let's go. So first of all, let me just say that it really rocked my world. This Asus XT8 is goddamn amazing compared to, by the way, I did say the wrong router in the previous video. I said it's a TP-Link EA7500, excuse me. It's actually a Linksys as one of the comments pointed out. Thank you very much for putting me right on that. It is a Linksys EA7500 and it is, oh boy, a crap, crap Wi-Fi 5 router, I have to admit. Now, there were people who left some comments to say that they had a Wi-Fi 5 router and it worked completely okay for them. However, as I mentioned, for me, nothing would work. And when I was able to play Half-Life Alex completely wirelessly, completely wirelessly, with no glitches, no latency, everything worked absolutely amazing. I have to say I was gobsmacked completely gobsmacked because the graphics were super smooth. The frame rate was, oh my God, beautifully battery smooth. It just did not feel like there was any cutting or any throttling going on. Just everything worked so well. Gigodam from Virtual Desktop, if you're watching today's video, oh my God, VR orgasm when it comes to frame rates. Absolutely amazing, guys. Have you tried virtual desktop? Are you a virtual desktop owner? 
leave a comment below. Let us know what kind of tuning do you use to have, you know, really good kind of things. For me, it's very simple. I only put the accelerated things on and pretty much that's it because I was streaming. But when I'm not recording footage, I basically take the video streaming accelerator off. And the bitrate, by the way, now let's talk about bitrate a little bit. And I will put some timestamps below so you can refer to all the different sections, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. When I started at 150 Mbps, now what happened was, is I had, when I'm shaking my head left and right, I get a lot of what I would call blinders, like these kind of black things that you see appearing on the side of the actual headset as you move your head, you rotate it from left to right. All you have to do if this happens, by the way, don't go to the super sampling. No need to do that. Don't bring down the super sampling. No need to bring down the graphics inside of the game either, by the way. We are running at maximum graphics. And by the way, both on Half-Life Alyx, but also on After the Fall at the end of this video, you'll see that it is also on full graphics in game two. All you have to do is bring down the Mbps inside of your virtual desktop. Now, mine is now running at about 100 Mbps and the graphics are still extremely good. They are super comparable to my true HP Reverb G2, to be honest with you. They are very, very comparable. Like the differences are super, super slight. I actually am really, really amazed. The graphics, the shadows, Everything is super smooth in terms of the jagged edges. There aren't that many. And the compression now, there is still some compression. So let's talk about compression. There still is some compression in some of the areas of the game. Yes, that is true. Compared to the HP Reverb G2, it's still not 100% perfect. I would say it's about 92% perfect. That means there's 80%, there's 8% left that perhaps is not perfect yet. But I'm telling you, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We are getting there. I'm not quite sure if the Pimax Crystal is really going to be... I'm sorry to say I love Pimax and I'm, I, I hope that they send me a headset so I can try it. But, you know, if we're going towards super standalone graphics here, then what is going to be the point of buying a PCVR tethered headset? Because when you're playing tetherless and you have these kind of graphics, using the XT8 with this amount of super fast, incredible no latency kind of effect, it is another world out there in terms of PCVR. It's just absolutely incredible. And I don't even know if, you know, Intel working with, by the way, uh, Meta to come out with a special kind of chip accessory that you can put inside of your computer so that it increases the streaming uh, Mbps by 2%, 2%, um, 25% or, or 100%, I can't remember exactly the number, but it's supposed to basically give it a really good boost. I don't even know if that is going to be necessary for the Pico 5 or the potentially the Meta Quest 3, if the Meta Quest 3 performs well, of course, streaming completely wirelessly, because oh boy, oh boy, does it perform really, really well. But let's talk about some of the downsides, however, when you're using the Pico 4 streaming using virtual desktop to Steam VR. So first of all, let me just say that it really rocked my world. This Asus X-T8 is goddamn amazing compared to, by the way, I did say the wrong router in the previous video. I said it's a TP-Link E8750, 7500, excuse me. It's actually a Linksys, as one of the comments pointed out. Thank you very much for putting me right on that. It is a Linksys E8750, and it is, oh boy, a crap, crap Wi-Fi 5 router, I have to admit. Now, there were people who left some comments to say that they had a Wi-Fi 5 router and it worked completely okay for them. However, as I mentioned, for me, nothing would work. And when I was able to play Half-Life Alex completely wirelessly, completely wirelessly, with no glitches, no latency, everything worked absolutely amazing. I have to say I was gobsmacked completely gobsmacked because the graphics were super smooth. The frame rate was, oh my God, beautifully battery smooth. It just did not feel like there was any cutting or any throttling going on. Just everything worked so well. Geekodam from Virtual Desktop, if you're watching today's video, 
Oh my God. VR orgasm when it comes to frame rates. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, guys. Have you tried virt virtual desktop? Are you a virtual desktop owner? Leave a comment below. Let us know what kind of tuning do you use to have, you know, really good kind of things. For me, it's very simple. I only put the accelerated things on and pretty much that's it because I was streaming. But when I'm not recording footage, I basically take the video streaming accelerator off. And the bitrate, by the way, now let's talk about bitrate a little bit. And I will put some timestamps below so you can refer to all the different sections, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. When I started at 150 Mbps, now what happened was, is I had, when I'm shaking my head left and right, I get a lot of what I would call blinders, like these kind of black things that you see appearing on the side of the actual headset as you move your head, you rotate it from left to right. All you have to do if this happens, by the way, don't go to the super sampling. No need to do that. Don't bring down the super sampling. No need to bring down the graphics inside of the game either, by the way. We are running at maximum graphics. And by the way, both on Half-Life Alyx, but also on After the Fall at the end of this video, you'll see that it is also on full graphics in game two. All you have to do is bring down the Mbps inside of your virtual desktop. Now, mine is now running at about 100 Mbps, and the graphics are still extremely good. They are super comparable to my true HP Reverb G2, to be honest with you. They are very, very comparable. Like, the differences are super, super slight. I actually am really, really amazed. The graphics, the shadows, Everything is super smooth. In terms of the jagged edges, there aren't that many. And the compression now, there is still some compression. So let's talk about compression. There still is some compression in some of the areas of the game. Yes, that is true. Compared to the HP Reverb G2, it's still not 100% perfect. I would say it's about 92% perfect. That means there's 8% there's left that perhaps is not perfect yet. But I'm telling you, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We are getting there. I'm not quite sure if the Pimax Crystal is really going to be... I'm sorry to say I love Pimax, and I'm, I, I hope that they send me a headset so I can try it. But, you know, if we're going towards super standalone graphics here, then what is going to be the point of buying a PC VR tethered headset? Because when you're playing tetherless and you have these kind of graphics, using the XT8 with this amount of super fast, incredible no latency kind of effect, it is another world out there in terms of PCVR. It's just absolutely incredible. And I don't even know if, you know, Intel working with, by the way, uh, Meta to come out with a special kind of chip accessory that you can put inside of your computer so that it increases the streaming uh, Mbps by 2%, 2 25% um, or 100%. Or I can't remember exactly the number, but it's supposed to basically give it a really good boost. I don't even know if that is going to be necessary for the Pico 5 or the potentially the Meta Quest 3, if the Meta Quest 3 performs well, of course, streaming completely wirelessly, because oh boy, oh boy, does it perform really, really well. But let's talk about some of the downsides, however, when you're using the Pico 4 streaming using virtual desktop to Steam VR. Now, for me, the downsides, and I'm not quite sure what happened there because I did go into the virtual desktop and also the Pico 4 Discord. And do go and join the Discord, guys, if you own a Pico 4 or virtual desktop so you can get, you know, real-time, almost real-time, you know, uh, feedback from other people who also own stuff. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll go and ask for you in the service. But do join the service as well as the community is quite friendly over there. It's the fact that, well... When I was, now Virtual Desktop just had a patch very recently, by the way. Um, and for me, well, the issue was that Half-Life Alyx and also, by the way, after the fall, both games, I had some issues with the bindings of the controllers. Basically, the right controller, every time I would want to rotate my view uh, by pushing the joystick left or right, it wouldn't work. In order to look left or right, I had to push, well, uh, rotating right, I had to push the joystick upwards. But when I push left, it works to see left, but it doesn't turn 25 or 45 degrees. It turns like a 180 almost. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I did try a lot of different bindings inside of the game itself in trying to activate other people's 
bindings that they had, you know, set up for various different VR headsets. But the problem is that in Steam VR at the moment, there isn't an option, as far as I know, to pick Pico in as an option. You can pick like HTC or Mixed Reality, uh, Windows Mixed Reality, or um, you know, uh, Oculus or Oculus Rift kind of bindings, but you can't go and pick the Pico one yet inside of the Steam VR bindings panel i'm not quite sure so you have to basically use well the one that would normally work would be the oculus bindings those ones normally should be working however there is one other person inside of the actual virtual desktop server who said well he didn't have any issues whatsoever and everything worked for him there was no problem at all so I don't know, guys. Please leave a comment below. Let me know whether you have any issues when you're trying to rotate left and right inside of Half-Life Alyx or after the fall. Love to know if it's working for you. Maybe it's just a glitch for me. I'm not quite sure. And that it will go away, you know, after a few days or something. Or maybe there's something I need to switch off. I'm not quite sure. Although the virtual streaming assistant by Pico is deleted from my computer simply because it creates a lot of bugs inside of my computer. I'm not quite sure why, to be honest with you. For example, it doesn't make my HP uh, Reverb G2 work anymore with the controllers when I have it installed inside of my PC. I also uninstalled the Oculus Rift software just in case as well. So, and there's, you know, HP software generally doesn't cause any issues whatsoever. So I'm not quite, I don't really think that that's the issue, although I will delete it as well just to do a test and see whether it is causing any issues. Too. And then finally, the other issue that I have with the new virtual desktop is I'm not able to bring up the virtual desktop control panel when I'm inside of a VR game, which means that I basically have to force quit Steam VR completely if I want to access virtual desktop again. Now, the person in the Discord of virtual desktop also said that they didn't have this issue. They could actually bring up the virtual desktop control panel whilst they're in VR to change the settings. Uh, whether it's the MBPS or whether they want to change other settings whilst they're actually in VR. So do leave a comment below as well. Please leave me a comment below whether you can access the virtual desktop control panel via the Pico 4 whilst you're inside of a VR game or whether you also, like me, have to force quit your Steam VR before you can access virtual desktop control panel and change the settings once more. Now, after Half-Life Alex, where I had tremendous good fun. I also tried it on After the Fall because After the Fall does also require quite a lot of graphical power, I have to admit. And there's a lot of settings you can change inside of there in order to boost, you know, for example, the super sampling or the shadows or the texturing. There's a whole heap of different things you can change. So it does require a lot more meat, especially as it's a multiplayer game running from a server outside of the Pico you know, most of it as well. So, but I have to admit that it really, really performed very, very well. Both games, by the way, if we talk about the audio, there was no crackling coming whatsoever from the actual Pico itself. Now, of course, I was using the Pico 4 with my own headset and I was using the 3.5 mm to USB-C jack, by the way. And we will talk about battery life in just a moment. Um, but I had no issues, no crackling. Everything was working perfectly well. Um, I have to say it was really, really a breeze. So, so far, so good. I have to admit, really awesome time. Now, in terms of the battery life, however, because I was using virtual desktop and it is prone to using a little bit more of the battery, well, the Pico did not last two hours and a half or whatever. It basically lasted about an hour 45 before the actual Pico itself, well, lost battery. So I did lose, I would say, I mean, normally speaking, it doesn't go beyond two hours or... I think the maximum I got it was about 2 hours 15 or 2 hours 20 stretching it. So I think 2 hours 15 minutes is generally, you know, the most that I could get out of it. Um, but yeah, using virtual desktop and also plugging in the, uh, of course, the USB-C uh, with my headphones basically took at least half an hour out of it. And, you know, so, you know, you do need to be aware that you're not going to get an infinite amount of battery. And also, you know, my cables don't seem to be able to charge. Even the Pico 4 cable, when I put it inside of the computer, um, you know, to charge the actual headset, let's say, it doesn't actually charge the headset whilst I'm playing. It would still trickle down. So regardless if you're wireless or if you're wired, it will still trickle down. There's no way to actually keep the batteries from, you know, charging up as you're using it. 
But if you are using, for example, perhaps a USB adapter in order to, you know, or power bank to, to keep it, it is possible that it won't power it, it will still trickle down, but it will last instead of an hour, 15 minutes, it could perhaps last, let's say, a good two hours and a half or even, let's say, three hours or so. But I have not checked. Please leave a comment below. Let me know if you use a, you know, a power bank and whether it's helped you in your standalone uh, to increase the power from two hours to, let's say, four hours, or let us know how much uh, time extra you had when using your power bank. I think the community would love to know this kind of data. But guys, is it really, really worth it to pick up a Pico 4 this year to upgrade to it and ditch your PC VR? It doesn't mean buying a Pico 4 and still use your PC VR. I'm talking about ditching your PC VR headset. Well, guys, I have to admit that in terms of graphics, I'm, you're going to hate me for this. And please leave a comment below. Do you think it's worth it? Because honestly, if you don't have PC VR, I think it is worth it. For the graphics, for the audio, is it worth it? Definitely, no issues with the audio. I definitely think it's worth the upgrade for sure. However, battery life, is it worth it? In my opinion, it's not. It's not. It's not. I think that to me, you know, I still prefer being able to play VR for as long as I want without worrying about batteries whatsoever and having a cable attached and having perfect graphics because let's not forget that the Pico 4 is not perfect. There's still 8% there that's not perfect, but it's 8%. It's very small, okay? It's very, very small. But for the battery life, Definitely, definitely not worth upgrading at this moment in time. Comfort, ah, comfort compared to the HP Reverb G2, definitely not worth the upgrade. HP Reverb G2 is definitely much more comfortable for me in terms of a VR headset, using it for longer than one hour. It doesn't leave such a big mark on my face. And also, it's much darker inside, so the immersion is much more there compared to the Pico 4. And also, of course, I don't have any issues with control of bindings with the HP Reverb G2. So definitely, this is an issue with the Pico 4, which is not, at the moment, compatible with every single VR game, FYI. Some games just don't work with the controllers compared to if it's tethered. If it's tethered, it will work. If it's not, it doesn't work. And then sometimes it's the other way around. But with PC VR, generally, you're never, ever going to have that issue. So until I can trust that the Pico 4 gives me 100% controller binding to every single game on PC VR, I have to say it's not worth it. But guys, it is getting ultra, ultra close. Give it another few years, another couple generations. And I'm sorry to say, but tethered PC VR, unless something happens, unless something happens, well, I think you can say goodbye to tethered experiences and hello to standalone PC VR. Guys, thank you so much for spending some time together. Now let's roll the tape with the next 20 minutes if you're curious to know as to how it performed with After the Fall with the sound. All right, guys, I'll see you in another video very soon. And at the end of the 20 minutes, there'll be just shout outs to the members of your Essentials. See you later, gang. Take it easy. Bye for now. Enjoy the stream. This, this is one of our biggest harvest sites in downtown LA. There's a lot to shoot at out there. So how about it? Stay safe. Found a booster. <clears throat> a few stops further, we could have been chilling in Hollywood. Please stand clear of the door. Breaking time.
disappeared. I'm not scared of the dark or anything. Ah, the open air. And a nice view of downtown LA. What's left of it anyway? Tried to contain the outbreak as best they could, but, well, the 
Reloading. <laughs> 